the reason I announced this commi committee, this House Select Committee on, to address the coronavirus crisis, uh, is so that we can, in the here and now, address as we go forward with transparency and accountability. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi launching an oversight committee with subpoena power to oversee the Trump administration's response to COVID-19. Here its reaction is House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, who joins us from Capitol Hill. Um, leader, uh, isn't that what Congress is supposed to do? Aren't they supposed to provide oversight to the administration? Yes, and we're already providing that. Think for one moment. You have the Oversight Committee, that that's all they focus upon. But in the last bill that we just passed, the CARES Act, we created three new oversight entities, right? We created the pandemic oversight that is a setup of inspector generals. Glenn Fine is running that. We created a special um, individual who will be appointed by the president, confirmed by the Senate. And then we actually created a congressional oversight that is appointed by all the leaders from Schumer to McConnell to Pelosi and myself. Um, this is redundant, but what's most telling here is who she appointed. She didn't go with the oversight committee chair, her own. She appointed Clyburn. And remember what Clyburn said, that her majority whip. He said, this is a time to restructure into their vision, government. Um, this isn't about oversight. It sounds like pure politics. Really, we, this speaker should be focused on what we need to deliver to the American public. Let's take care of the crisis of, at hand right now. We have five different oversights already looking at this, and this is what she comes up with. We need to implement the trillions of dollars that we just said that we passed. Let's get it to small business. Let's get people continuing to work. Let's make sure we get that $140 billion out to the hospitals who actually need it, the, our modern-day soldiers in the medical community. Yeah. You know, uh, it sounds like there are a number of Democrats, including uh, Speaker Pelosi, who's already talking about phase four. We've just barely gotten phase three started right now. But when you listen to some of her um, some of her agenda items regarding phase four, it does sound like it's a lot of what the Democrats proposed in January. The only difference is now they've added some money for hospitals and community clinics. Right. What she's proposing is the things that she was denied in the last bill, things that had nothing to do with coronavirus, uh, the Green New Deal, changing election law, bailing out states on pensions that has spent incorrectly, uh, providing more money to sanctuary cities, everything that doesn't deal with um, the coronavirus, Planned Parenthood. These are the things that why she held this bill up for more than four days. I mean, this would already be implemented today. We'd be talking about how we're getting the money out had she not held the bill up earlier. You know, um, since... Uh, phase three is now underway, and it sounds like some people are going to wind up getting checks uh, as early as next week. Uh, as a former small business owner yourself, you know, I think you started a business when you were about 20 years old. How important is it for people who are finding these times so challenging with their small business that they get on the website and start the process of getting the money that is out there for them today? This is the most important thing to do. This bill does a number of things, but what it does with small business is very important. And if you're a sole proprietor, um, you're a small business, where I was when I was 20 years old, government has shut you down to make m most of those small businesses, so you have no income. We want to provide you liquidity. It's only a two-page form that you have to fill out. It's out there. Uh, you can go to my right. Twitter page. I'll have it up there, GOP leader, to be able to send it to you. But what it will do is, if you pay your employees, you pay your rent, you pay your your utilities, that's no longer a loan. A portion of that is a grant. We want to keep people working. We want to right. supply you the resource. If your larger business will secure a loan, give you a, a retention tax credit to pay for half of your employees. Individuals will get a check directly to them if they're making right. $99,000 or less, and the hospitals get resources. That's what the CARES Act did, and that's what we should be focused on making sure we're implementing instead of looking at some other bill or some other oversight, because we just instituted yeah. three new oversight committees to see that, o oversee this. Right. Speaking of oversight, uh, Speaker Pelosi's spokesman said regarding the oversight committee, quote, this bipartisan committee's work will help save lives and taxpayer dollars in real time, not after it's too late to make a difference. And that's something everyone should welcome. Your response well, to that. 
<laughs> well, that's just not true. I mean, has she not learned from uh, the impeachment? And maybe that's what she's thinking about here. You cannot create a new select committee without Congress voting. I'm here because I'm meeting with the president today, but nobody else is here in Washington. When would we come back and vote on this? Yeah. It would be too late. That's why in the CARES Act, we implemented three new oversight entities within there that she has an appointment to. But we already have the oversight committee only to focus on this. And we also have every single committee has an oversight subcommittee. It seems to me that this is just politics as usual, instead of focused on the crisis that we need to be today, delivering for the American public, making sure we're getting the resources to them. Well, Kevin McCarthy, all alone on Capitol Hill, sir, thank you very much. Thank you. Good to hear from you regarding all these things in the news. Thank you, sir.